need to pray always and not to lose heart. Jesus said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to the judge and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, the judge refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And Jesus said, listen to what the unjust says, unjust judge says, and will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, God will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Lots of steps and big, fancy columns, tall doors, classic image of a courthouse in the downtown of a large city, maybe New York or Chicago or even down in Cedar Rapids at our courthouse. Inside, upon a high bench made of dark walnut, he hides behind the power of the court and he looks down to see her standing below him on a shiny marble floor. And this judge doesn't care for people and has no fear of God. The woman is not only far from him in physical distance as he sits up high on his bench, but no, she's even farther from him than that. So far away that the distant perspective makes her appear as though she's just a tiny black dot, an annoying little gnat buzzing in his ears. He sees her almost every day, and he speaks about her to others only as that pushy little widow who has no case. The judge sits high above, and he looks down on this woman who has come to ask for justice. And the judge feels so very big, and he sees her as so very small. She's walked that street to the courthouse so many times now that the merchants along the way wave to her as she passes by. The vendor at the hot dog cart and the man at the newsstand see her coming. They cheer her on, go get him, today's your day. Well, their encouragement helps her to lift her tired legs up the steps of the court. And before she enters, she pauses and she prays, thanking God that she has arrived safely and asking for courage and strength to continue doing what she must do until she is heard. But her prayer doesn't end with her words. It continues as she walks forward toward that judge to plead her case one more time. Her persistent actions against injustice are her constant prayer. And as she looks up from the floor below, from her distant perspective, she sees him as the small man that he really is, caring for nothing and no one and no use for God. The judge is so very small, and this woman with the strength to keep on fighting day after day to be heard and receive justice, her trust in God makes her so very big. Today will indeed be the widow's day. Just as the hot dog man predicted, the judge is going to give her what she has been asking for. Her persistence has paid off. She leaves the courthouse, head held high, shoulders straight. She is a woman small of frame and of low social status, but her courage and her persistence is very big. Did the judge change his ways? No, he did not. He's just as small as ever, maybe even smaller. He merely decided that he'd had enough of this pushy widow 
She was cluttering his docket with her endless petitions. He was hoping to get promoted to a higher court. Her case lingering on day after day would look bad for him. No, it was in his best interest to just move her along. As we listen to the parable and we visualize images of, what our, of our modern day world, we see once again how Jesus reverses things on us. The powerful judge and the poor widow are not what we expect them to be. The big judge is a small man, uncaring, lacking faith, self-centered. And the small widow, unrelenting in her pursuit of justice, she is the size of her courage, very big. After telling this story, Jesus asks the crowd a question, one that is set up to contrast God with this unjust judge. See, if we mistake that judge as big, well, then we might, understand, might, we might misunderstand what it is that Jesus is trying to tell us. See, we might think that we are that small widow pestering our big God with our prayers until God finally just gives in to get us to leave God alone and quit being a bother. But seeing the judge as small, well, we understand Jesus' question a little differently. Jesus asks if an unjust and selfish judge can do the right thing, even if he does it for the wrong reasons, then how much more so can God's children count on God to hear them when they pray? We can see Jesus' point. God is good and just, and therefore we can trust our prayers will be heard. But that doesn't always add up, does it? Because we all experience those times in our lives when God doesn't seem to be listening. We might even begin to wonder what the use is in praying at all. But we must not give up. Because God is there, ever faithful, ever present. God knows our prayers before we pray them. So how can we know God's response? How can we trust that God is listening? Well, it comes from the Holy Spirit that mysterious gift of faith, the one Nicholas mentioned that's beyond our logic, that persistent voice that day after day tells you that God loves you, the persistent voice that promises when you open your hands to the bread and the wine, you will receive forgiveness and grace, Christ's body and blood. And that persistent voice that encourages you to face each day with hope that the love, the justice, and the peace of God's kingdom will triumph over the hate, injustice, and chaos of this world. We sometimes need God to be very big. Big enough to have created the whole world and to redeem the whole world. Big enough to be more overwhelming than the things that overwhelm us. Poverty, hatred, violence, greed, war. Big enough to carry us into that fight day after day. But a God that big can also seem so very far away. And we can begin to feel so very insignificant and small. So small that we fear that the tiny fists of our actions will not even put a dent in the injustice we're called to fight. So small that we fear the tiny voice of our prayers might echo into the distance between this great big God and us. But our big God understands this. And our big God could never tolerate that kind of distance from the children that God created in God's image and loves. So God, like the widow, is persistent in God's pursuit of us. So much so as to become small, small like us, as small as a tiny baby in a manger, as small as a convicted criminal, beaten and shamed, dying on a cross. Jesus' persistence against unjust powers and sin persisted all the way to his death. 
and in what the world calls weakness and smallness, we see God to be bigger and stronger than ever. From that weak, small body laid in the tomb rose life that was so powerful, so big that it crushed death forever. And that is our God, big enough to create the stars and small enough to keep an eye on the sparrow, small enough to die and persistent enough to live again and big enough to embrace us all, you, me, and the whole world. That God that we trust with our life, surely that God can be trusted with our prayers. Amen.